give it up. <laughs> give it up for Ivan Kulkarni. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when I say Jersey, you say Jersey, 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 Thank you. <laughs> All right, what do I want to close on? What do I want to close on? <laughs> oh, yes. um, I have a I, I have a cool development of my job, which is really fun. Uh, I got a British boss. Uh, which is sick, because before when I wasn't doing my work, I was lazy, and now it's a form of anti-colonial resistance. <laughs> Alright, that wasn't a three-hour nap I took in the middle of the day, that was a peaceful protest, Daniel. <laughs> you fuck yourself. Uh, I don't know, it's weird, the job is in tech, uh, which I hate, uh, I hate the tech world for so many reasons, but one of the reasons is that the lingo moves really fast, like words we're using right now were not words we'd even known existed, like last month. Like my boss the other day asked me if I knew how to mint an NFT in the metaverse, uh, and I thought he was having a stroke. I thought, I thought something really bad was, or he was ruining a Marvel movie for me, I couldn't tell him what was happening. But I, I feel like that in all facets of my life that I, I can't keep up with lingo. Like I just found out they're called depressive episodes and not funks. I've been calling them funks <laughs> this whole time no one told me. I was like, there's nothing funky about what I'm going through ever. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Uh, I don't know, dude. I hate my job. I, uh, I was... <laughs> That's the only sincere thing you're gonna hear me say tonight. The rest of this is made up. Uh, no, I do. I do hate my job. I was looking for a new job, so I was on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, connecting with old high school friends and stuff, trying to, you know, upgrade my uh, corporate network. Uh, but it's cool. I didn't realize this about LinkedIn when I was looking people up. There's celebrity profiles on LinkedIn, just like Instagram or Facebook. You can look up, like, artists that you like, and sometimes they're on LinkedIn. Like, I found the rapper Gucci Mane on LinkedIn. So I went to go immediately connect. I was like, this guy's going to help me. This guy's... This guy's gonna help my career, uh, which is really weird. It's not like when you connect with like a normal profile. You go to connect with this every profile and it has all these questions for you. Like I went to go connect with Gucci Mane and then LinkedIn hit me with a pop-up that was like, do you know Gucci Mane? <laughs> and I was like, fuck this website. I can lie to this website, it doesn't matter. They won't be able to tell. So I clicked yes. And then LinkedIn gave me another pop-up that was like, how do you know Gucci Mane? <laughs> Yvonne? I don't know. It was weird because there wasn't like a free dialogue thing. I couldn't just skip that. There was like a bunch of pre-selected options that was like, I'm personal friends with Gucci Mane. I worked across the street from Gucci Mane, a bunch of shit. Uh, the closest I'd ever come to Gucci Mane was I bought the album East Atlanta Santa on CD in 2007. Uh, so I clicked an option that said, we've done business together. <laughs> And then, I don't know, yeah, it wasn't sure he'd get it like that. So I also endorsed him for having pockets so heavy that he can't walk steady. Uh, I feel like that's really gonna help. I feel like he's gonna see that I know him. Uh, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been living in New York for a while now, which is cool. Uh, the thing is, I don't feel like a New Yorker. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm not gonna feel like a New Yorker until I can do gritty, this city has changed monologues. <laughs> You know, like I want to be able to walk around the street and be like, I miss when hot dogs were men. You know, like I want to be able to do like, real old school shit like that. But I can't because this city has changed in my six years here, but not in like a cool way. So I have to walk around the street and approximate. I have to be like, I miss when that uh, cafe bookstore streetwear brand was just a cafe bookstore. <laughs> like the good old days. <laughs> it was just that. Uh, I do have relatable uh, New York experiences. Uh, like, I have rats in my apartment, uh, is the part's not fun. Uh, but I have, uh, my, me and my roommates keep getting into arguments on what to do with the rats. Um, they want to set traps, and I want to sow dissent into their ranks. I want to do a more permanent solution. Like, I was, I'm a student of history, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find and assassinate the rat leader. And then I'm going to input my own rat shadow government back by me and my military might. And then... <laughs> When the native rat population rises up and overthrows my rat shadow government, that's fine. Because the entire time, I've been arming and training a rat counter-revolutionary military militia group. <laughs> Alright, to give the impression of dissent amongst the rat community, cutting them off from international aid. <laughs> also, while this is happening, I'm selling missiles to Iran for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why that's part of my plan, it's just very important. It's very important that people let me do that. I don't get it. Oh. I don't know. It's weird. I, uh, I don't know. I, imperialism is all around us. Uh, that's, a, that's a good segue.
uh, it's weird. It's really ingrained uh, in America, especially like even in like for children. Like, did people grow up playing uh, the video game Call of Duty? Did anyone grow up playing that video game? That's a fucked up video game, right? Why were we 13 deploying into Afghanistan? Why was that? We had no historical context as to why we were going down there. We were just boys. We were just boys <laughs> being sent to fight in a war we knew nothing about. <laughs> And it's fucked. It's really shitty, because nothing should exist to make war seem fun for children. I think that's a really weird thing that we do. Because, like, objectives in kids' video games should be, like, fun things, you know? It should be, like, help the wizard solve the puzzle. It should be, like, finish the race. It should be, like, destabilize the Mujahideen. Like, it should be... <laughs> that's fucking weird, dude. Any Mooj heads in the audience tonight? Give it up. Give it up. Good. That's the right reaction. That's the good. I was just checking. Um, I don't know, dude. I uh, yeah, I, I think about I think about what's happening with kids sometimes. Cause like, I have a like my uh, my sister uh, as a kid, and um, she was talking about she was like I'm really uh, anxious about like social media how uh, social media is, is is a part of these kids' lives really young, and I have a I have like a love hate relationship with social media. I think it can be used for good things as well as bad. Uh, like, uh, people were posting on, uh, their stories recently, they were like, hey, uh, the cocaine in Brooklyn is really bad right now, if you're doing cocaine in Brooklyn, please abstain, please be safe, it's laced with stuff. And I was like, good, I think that's a good use of social media. Um, I do have one problem with it. Uh, I don't know if there's gonna be a similar campaign to tell me when it's okay to do cocaine in Brooklyn again. Like, um, I don't know if there's gonna be stuff out there that's like, the cocaine in Brooklyn is great right now, absolutely. <laughs> If you're gonna do cocaine in Brooklyn, do it right now. It's the best it's ever been. All right, thank you, everyone. That was great.